hi sorry about that um this is going to be added to the end of that video because at the time I said I was going to work on the cutting then I was going to pick the papers so um I did pick papers for for these um and I'll show you me show me cutting them but I wanted to show you my thought of the side slider card I think I got it to work um, and I, I did uh, play with it to make sure it did work um, just so that it I mean I could have done it um, if you only knew how much trouble I went to to get this thing to work um, it would have been about five hours of video but it does work and I'm going to show you here now. I am going to put another pull on the other side because I have a thumb or a thumb pull here. And basically, it it work better if it's in the book. But as you can see, they slide out. They get caught because this isn't in the book. Um, and that, and I did both sides so that it will work. And I am going to show you how I did the mechanism and everything. So let me zoom out so that you can see. There we go. That should be good. I remember staying print. Um, if you remember, this particular mechanism requires uh, two pieces of cardstock. You've got one that is the full three and three quarters by eleven, and then there's a second one that is also three and three quarters by one, two, six, six and three quarters. And when you put it all together, you end up with a mechanism like this. And yes, I did, this is the slider part, and I will show every, how, how I came about to do that. Um, my first thing was, I know a lot of times when people do these slider cards, they just do around the whole piece of cardstock. And... To me, I kind of didn't want it to show because when you look at this one, it doesn't show the slider part of it. You don't see the band. Um, if I was still using the black plastic, which I'm not, it would probably be all right. But um, I do a thing called Graze, and it's a snack. They send me four snacks about every two weeks, and their boxes come wrapped. I'm going to find the cool one. And these bands, these plastic bands, or not flat, it's not really flat, whatever this is. It's a thick polymer. And, um, and because I was working on the slider card, it suddenly struck me I can save these and reuse them. So that's where my bands come coming from for this. So what I did was, before I even attached this, these two pieces together, I took this six and three quarter inch card. I put it in my trimmer. I started at two and a half and went up to about three and three quarters. So it's a half, I made a slit is basically what it is. And it's about an inch and a quarter. Um, and then I just uh, took my paper and I flipped it this way. Do not be tempted to flip it this way because then it will be off. I have the I have the card stuff that I goofed up on to show to prove it. What you want to do is start at two and a half 
pull up to three and three quarters. So if, if I was putting this in my trimmer, I'd line it up so it's a half inch on this side, go up to two and a half, take my blade up to two and a half, set it down, push in, go up to about three and three quarters. And then I would just flip it this way. And do the same thing. Once I did that, I had my slit. All I did was I went in with my um, scissors and just cut in at, a, at an angle from, you know, this part doesn't matter much because um, how wide this is. I mean, you can make it narrower if you want. The important part is to make sure that you clear out the paper here. So I just made a slit and pull it out on both sides. And I have this actually measured. And then what I did was I took quarter inch score tape and these are about they're a little over an inch wide. That's why I made these about an inch and a quarter so that it would move freely. And then you want about an inch of tape. And I would suggest using really the red line or what I use here is score tape. I'm going to turn on my light here. Okay. Um, scrappy tape. I know one edge is straighter than the other. And I just put it as close to the end of the thing, end of the strip. I didn't go all the way to the end um, because that way I don't have to worry about the glue getting caught elsewhere. And I do make sure that there is no glue over the edges. In fact, I've been known to kind of roll it in a little bit from the edge just so it doesn't catch. my little trick. Um, then just thread it through these here and they say when you do this it needs to be tight but not too tight you don't want your paper bowing up. You don't want it so tight it can't move. So, uh, let's see. How about as tight as a pair of jeans that look the best on you are? Uh, <laughs> you don't want it super loose. You don't want it super tight. And make sure it moves freely, and this one does. And then just trim it close to the tape and move your tape to one side. And I'm sh there's lots of tutorials about how to do this. So it's going to end up like that. I don't know if you can see the plastic. <coughs> now, I cut and decorate it my my sheets um now these it's not important that they go all the way across because part of it's not it's not going to be seen you need approximately two and a half inches because like i said um these this is three and three quarters of an inch so if you go about two two and a quarter two and a half um that's perfect these are the scraps i had left over from when i did my when I was making my cuts, or when I was doing my full page ones. I, like I said, I um, will show you the pa paper I chose out of the paper stack. Um, 
and I'll show that here in a minute what I got for the covers and that and I'll show you the cover of the paper stack I, I chose. It is a black and white and there's touches of gray and I was thinking about it I thought you know I need to bring the touches of gray in and how can I do that and my thoughts of bringing the touches of gray in is I have some gray cardstock and I would just use that for journaling um, journaling and mats, photo mats, so, uh, because that would bring in the gray. So the album's not going to be pure black and white, it's going to be black, white, and, and shades of gray. Probably be one or two shades. Now to attach the mats themselves, you need to make sure your tape is only on your plastic slider. So I go less than an inch, I go about three quarters. And and I start one almost right on top of my join. There's maybe a, a eighth of an inch from the edge of my cut here. I pull that out. Now, in doing these, because when, when you set this up, this piece here is actually going to be shorter this way than here. And um, I'll show you a little tip I discovered while I was working on these. So what I do is I go from the bottom here. And I probably should attach it to, oh well, I'll do it backwards. You could attach it to your, your long one first. If you don't like working with all that long length, this is a good way to do it. All right, decide which way you want this to go. And I'm going to put this one up. Um, what comes out on top will depend upon how this goes in. Now, I want to make sure that since this is going to slide out this way, that this slides this way. So, I will be attaching on this side. So I will be turning this over. You see that's I just go straight over. Still see that? Okay. I know earlier I was zoomed in super. So and because I attached it on this side, which is now on my left. So basically I'm attaching it on the right side. And again, about three quarters of an inch. Put it up about an eighth of an inch from the edge. Peel that off. Again, make sure the shorter end is towards you. So where you started your cut from, that two and a half, is towards you and line it up on the bottom and the side and if everything works and you pray it does you go like this oh, it works yay <laughs> I'm so happy I think I should put this piece the other way. Oh well. I am not gonna quibble about it. Now I'm noticing that on this side, okay, it's just how it feeds in. Alright, so now that I have that done, I can take my. This one.
I take my um, more of my score tape. And again, you want anywhere from three eighths of an inch to a half inch. So I know this is three eighths, which makes it just over a quarter. Some strange reason I cannot find my eighth inch. There it is. It was there. I just couldn't see it. I am going to also do an eighth inch. No, I'm not. I have to think about this. Sometimes my mind doesn't work. That's almost half an inch. Okay, I'm not going to worry about it. Um, do it at least three eighths of an inch. Do half an inch if you want to. And then just it's sometimes helpful if you put the end of your tape line missing spot there. So I'm going to add a little bit more just so that to make sure that this sticks all the way to the edge. Don't be afraid to add my cape. I think the three eighths of an inch works really well for this type of thing. Now I'm lining up the edge of my tape and praying it straight. It looks pretty straight with this solid line, and then I'm just taking the edge of my addition and making sure to align it on the sides and making sure it's aligned with that. And there we go. We're going to bring back in our scoreboard. Now, if you notice, my um, den part is over here on my right. Um, I did a little cleaning up and I moved stuff. Don't want that. Oh, it's been one of those days. Tomorrow is Sunday, and I do a group. Well, used to be held at one place, but they kind of shut it down. Um, I used to do a thing called Second Saturday. Score that on the other side as well. So you're going to score this at five and three quarters and eleven and a half. I used to uh, be part of a group that um, we did a craft show. So it was a small one. Um, I think no more than 12 crafters at a time. It was on the second Saturday of the month. And I found it. And I mean, the price was right. It was $20 each time. Um, you also had to do a, a $10, um, $10 thing for the uh, drawing. And the thing is, for the drawing, all the, all the vendors' contributions 
went into one bag or basket or whatever it was and um, the whoever won got that so it, it was kind of nice um, and it was held at a place a stone place called Jerusalem Stone and the neat thing about them is they bring in recycled stone from Israel Okay, I can see an issue right now. Yeah, I should have gone half an inch. Okay, there is a way to fix it. Um, because in Israel, they don't mind, they reuse the stone. When, when a building is torn down, they reuse the stone, whether it be in um, another building, on a, a sidewalk, you know, whatever it is, uh, they reuse the stone. And they bring in the stone and they, they, um, they import the stone from Israel and uh, they sell it here in the U.S. Well, on the second Saturday of the month, they'd hold a little craft show. And, that. and I did that for about a year and a half or two years. And um, then uh, uh, something happened and we weren't doing it anymore. Well, some of the ladies that were involved in it decided that, hey, we're going to do it again. We're going to find another venue. So they found another venue. And this time it's at a pizza place. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to go with my half inch. It's at a pizza place. And they make really good pizza, let's put it that way. They make really good pizza, for one thing. And it's all organic, locally sourced pizza. And they also have artist studios in this place. Um, the guy who bought it wanted to do something for the community, so he got he has like artist studios in there. There's a uh, workshop for pottery, um, screen printing, things like that, and he opens it up for free um, for the community, and they encourage the young people to come in and, you know, do classes and things like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this up at a half an inch. And my tape is a little wide. Um, So they, he, they encourage and they offer classes um, like on how to dress to uh, get a job, things like that. Um, they also, you know, encourage the artists to offer classes on like how to um, incorporate art into your life and, you know, it's really kind of a neat place, plus they make pretty good pizza and it's like I said, it's organic and locally sourced, and paper will help cover that. All right. And that ain't working. All right. Time to start over. I think I know what I did wrong. I'm going to set that to the side. I'm going to take this one that I know is correct. Don't worry, I'll fix that one. Those of you who are out there screaming, oh no, don't, don't, I will fix it. But anyways, they, um, figure out how I can do Maybe my problem is I cut this one, this Head on piece too long. Yeah, 
No, this is just the shade under. Six cents and quarters. Six. Oh. All right. I discovered my mistake. Uh, so they decided, hey, we're, we're going to do it again. I said, okay, cool. I'm all for it. Um, so we started in May. Yeah, May. So we did one, we did May and June. I missed July for health reasons. Um, and tomorrow, which is Sunday, now normally we do these on the second Saturday of the month. Uh, well, we're doing this is our uh, D stash sale. So basically, what we're doing is we're taking uh, stuff we have either too much of or we don't want anymore. Um, and we're de-stashing. I'm going to make sure I'm doing this the right way. Okay. Um, and it's only for three hours. Um, and I'm going, it was longer, I do, I pull out more stuff, but it's only three hours. I'm not going to pull out that much more stuff, that much stuff. So I got a 14 by 14 by 14 box of stuff and it's packed a little overflowing. Um, I've got a, I guess you'd call it a medium tote full of stuff. And, you know, it's stuff I know I won't use. So, I got I had to get that ready. It took me a couple days, and I procrastinated. I am a procrastinator. I will admit it up front. I procrastinate. Um, except for when it's something I really need. And actually, I work better when I procrastinate. When I'm under the gun. All right. So as you can see, I've got these in there, and they should work. Yay! I'm so happy. I got my little strip of um, tie back in there. And this, I know I scored this. Five and three quarters and eleven and a half. I think my problem was that either I didn't, um, I'm not sure what my problem was. I think I need to cut that one, that middle piece a little shorter. Because as you can see from this one, I mean, there's the fold. And there's the middle piece. So there's, you know, a little bit of in there. Now, the other, now this one is ready and I'm going to punch the holes in it so that you can see that. Find it all. Hold on a moment. There it is. That it should clear. If not, I'm really going to be torqued. Um, but yeah, I, I just center this and it fits and there's maybe an eighth of an inch on either side. And as you notice, I put the top here and it's not going to bother the rings at all because as you can, well, you can't see. Um, let me bring that, let me bring you guys in closer. All right. Um, you can see the holes and you can see where the edge of this is. 
so it's not going to bother it at all on either side. And another thing I learned when I did the other one, there was, there was a couple more tips I wanted to give you on this. Add a touch of glue. Uh -oh, I need to bring this in frame. You see where these hole, where the holes end? Add a touch of glue. It doesn't have to be a lot. Just a touch. And do this on all of your uh, things because when you're doing a top loading one or a top flip one like this, you're going to end up with gap in here if you don't do this. So make sure everything's correct. Lay it down. Um, let the glue take hold. Excuse me. The other thing I did was I took let me show you, I took a strip of this could be cardstock, it could be um, one of those little pieces of pattern paper that you have that there's no use for. <laughs> you can't use them in anything. And This is going to be black on black. I apologize for that. But I just put some glue there. I lift up this panel here. And about the middle, I just lay it down. And make sure there's no glue sticking out so that your panel sticks to it. Um... And then you let that dry. And it, this will just fold like that. But um, you let that dry and it will it will help. As you, I've already glued the top of this and I added the little um, extra piece. Make sure I'm grabbing the right sides. And Like I said, once you get this in the album itself, it should pull nicely. I think for some reason I didn't put this one down far enough. I might reopen it in a little bit, um, which I can do quite easily. So, we got this done. Haha, <laughs> good. Right? Alright, I'm gonna move you out. Don't get dizzy. Alright. So, like I said, I was gonna wait and pick out pattern with you, but I got a little head. I did some prep work. Because they're really... I still don't remember where I got this paper from. I was thinking I got it at Stamper's Inc. Now that I'm thinking about it, I might have gotten it at Hobby Lobby. But I don't know. So someone can tell me where... I'm thinking I got it at Stamper's Inc. Um, it's a K.I. Moder er, Modern Elegance. It's by Hampton Arts. And I'm thinking I got it at Hobby Lobby. But I don't see a price tag on it. So that's why I'm also thinking of Stamper's Inc. But it's got, you can see all the neat patterns and everything. And these are the papers I chose for my fronts and my back. So I haven't decided which one will be which yet. But one set of these will be in the front, one set will be in the back. Um, I also got to make sure that I have enough to do this little piece. 
but considering I am covering this with black card black cardstock first and then putting this um, I should be okay. If not, I'll just incorporate a couple of excess pieces to help. And I might have to bring in um, another paper line just to fill stuff out. At least for the tags and that. And there's not going to be a heck of a lot of tags. Well, maybe there will be. It depends. So, that ends this session. Talk to you later. Thanks. All right, now I'll do it. Uh, just a quick update. I work, I've did another one because that one just wasn't working. And um, what I recommend doing is putting your pieces together, doing the scoring, You can still put in your your slits um, at the two and a half to three and three quarters, and then if it is too long to where it is going to interfere with the um, score line down here, trim it about an eighth of an inch, and that way it will fit and work perfectly. Um, the other thing I suggest you do at this stage of the game is to do your finger pull if you're going to put one in. Um, this one's bigger than what I wanted, but it's what I found and then I found my other smaller one which I'll use for my other pockets. Um, and then go ahead and add your your cards then. Again, making sure that Okay, side. Again, using your tape, and um, you know, do less than an inch. Okay, I have to trim this one down. And I suggest using the red line or the scrappy tape. Some people really like the scrappy tape. Um, make sure that it doesn't go over the edges. Do it about an eighth of an inch from the your slot here. This is the score tape. And use your grid mat if you have one. Just line it up with the bottom of your smaller piece and the sides. That's some glue on that one. Yeah, be careful about your glue too. Again, do the same thing on the other side. of an inch from the edge there. I need this to go this way. Yeah, if you if you have the same patterns and you want them to come out on the same side, you gotta kinda think about when they pull out how they'll look because I want this pattern here to come out on both sides. I have to make sure when I put this on that um, when I put on the other one it was facing down. When I'm putting it on this side it's facing up. And the other thing is just don't slide your because you've got like two layers on here and if you slide your 
uh, thing. It's going to slide without the bottom layer going with. So you have to line up both edges. This bottom to the right. Got it. Then just fold it in. And you can see now that I have, um, I can fold this back. Right there, I have about an eighth of an inch of clearance down there, which is what you need. And now would be the perfect time. To punch it with um, whatever punching method. I mean, if, if you're going to take and um, do, oh, I don't have anything up here or on here. If you're going to do the uh, rings, you know, that you pull apart and then put on individually, you can wait until you get everything on to do that. Um, but if if you're going to do ribbon binding, if you're going to do um, some other type of binding for this for this particular album, the thing is because this is going to be an easel one that flips, uh, you want to make sure that there's clearance. And like I said, on all of mine, I left a half inch clearance just to make sure. And I'm going to leave this open so this glue dries, and then I can rub it off with my glue eraser. So I got it fixed. I'm happy. So realistically, now I can mat these ones. As soon as I found my papers. Um, so I'll mat these ones and they'll be done. And then we'll go on to the next batch, okay? Um, I have to cut some, cut those papers, and you'll see me do a whole bunch of cutting in the next video, and we'll see how far we get. All right, talk to you later.